Welcome to Essentials Explained. This is the second video in our formatting series. Where we'll be diving into the Excel to talk about how to set up your model. We'll talk about tactical tips to update your lookups tab and to build a clean working data set. Let's jump into the content. So let's go through some of the really tactical tips for how to format in Excel. Number one, let's talk about the goal. So what am I looking to achieve? What I think of as a great threshold for pretty much any document is could someone else, could another analyst sit down with your file and understand it in five to 10 minutes? Can they understand how does the logic work? Do they understand how do the inputs flow in? Could they update this file? Do they understand all they need to know about this file? in under 10 minutes, I think is a great threshold to have and is really what you're looking to do with all your files you hand off. Let's talk about the logic flow of our model and how we built it. So we built this and I'm just gonna lay this out in a left to right format because I think that makes sense and is logical to me. So we started with our lookup tables, which are our raw values, right? Our customer and our product lookup file. We've taken those and we've used them to augment our raw data and built that into a working data tab. So this is the mix of raw values, our raw data, and then formulas that reference our lookup tables, right? We use the index matches to look up what are the product description or the owner or the ownership category. We've then taken that working data and we've summarized it into a number of output tables. So these are formulas that reference the working data, or we've used pivot tables to summarize our working data into a number of output tables. The one thing you're gonna to wanna to do differently here when you format your file is you're gonna to wanna to switch this flow. And so this may seem a little unintuitive at first, but when we walk through it, this is best practice for formatting your Excel files, is you want your far left tab to be all your output tables, and then you want your far right tab to be all your lookup tables or everything that's feeding into your working data. I understand this is backwards from our logic flow, but when someone opens up your file, they want to be able to see what's the output, and then they can walk through the working data and the lookup tables to understand how you built your file. So now that we understand the basic threshold we're trying to achieve and the structure for formatting this file, let's jump into the Excel and walk through how we're going to do this. Because so far we haven't done really any formatting and our, our file is candidly a little bit of a mess. Let's walk through our logic first and what we'll do is we'll follow the same logic flow to format our sheet. One of the first things I want to do is I want to actually move my lookup tables off of this raw data tab because it's, it's not best practice to keep them here. It's confusing and it creates a bunch of potential issues. So I'm gonna use Shift F11 to create a new sheet. I'm just gonna call this new sheet lookups and then go back to my raw data tab. And so one of the nice things about Excel is it's smart enough to understand when you cut a selection of data, it will carry over those precedent formulas with it. And so for instance, if I paste this into this lookups tab, and I go back to my product lookup, you can see it's it's already referencing the lookups tab. So it's it doesn't need to be told that when you cut something from one place and put it other, change that. Excel can figure that one out. And so if I go back to my customer category, and let's say I wanna put that in as well, and maybe I wanna add a row and call this product lookup, and I wanna call this, let's, Let's do control one, I'll go to alignment, uh, center across selection, fill, let's put in one of these, maybe font, you know, bold, I think looks good. And then border, I'm just gonna throw a automatic border. Uh, Alt W V G will turn off grid lines. This is one that I find most people don't have grid lines. Um, Alt H O I will auto format your column widths. Now that I've built this, I can, pretty easily just grab this, paste it over, and now instead of product lookup, let's just call this customer lookup. Also, control shift seven will drop a order. Run your cell, control HOI will update that if that worked correctly, great. Now we have our lookups tab. I'm just gonna drag this all the way to the right so that it stays on the far right tab of my workbook. I can go in here and what I can do is change the tab color. So I like a gray for my lookups. That's pretty much where I always keep it. And then 
One of the things I like are separators in your file. So again, shift up 11 will create a new sheet. I'm going to call this lookups with an arrow, turn off grid lines, put a marker that says this page left intentionally blank with an arrow. Let me make that bold and italic control B control I, and then let's just drag that over. I'm going to make this white. I like all my separators white. I find it makes it really easy to be able to see where they are and be able to navigate your file. But again, that's personal preference. Here we have this raw data tab. I'm just going to delete these rows so that I don't have this group here because I think that is very confusing. Now I have just my raw data tab, which really isn't raw data. It's really working data. So I'm just going to rename this working data. I'm going to make this tab alt H O T. I'm going to make it orange because I like orange for my working data. It makes it really, really easy for me to find it. This format I think is pretty good. What I like to do is keep all my values on the far left and keep them in white. So that I know this is my values for my raw data set and these haven't been touched. Then I like to use a different color for every data set I'm using as a lookup. So for instance, all my products are this gray, all my customers are this yellow, and then my calculated fields, I'm gonna use a different color for. I put it in this blue, I don't love that blue, so I'm actually just gonna use uh, maybe a light green. That's Alt H H to do that quickly. This is fine for me. I'm gonna show you guys a, a slightly different way just in case you're interested. Some people will want to add a description above their column. So for instance, you might want to call this raw data. And so then if you go control one, you can go alignment, center across selection, and I'll just put an out, uh, outline border on this. And so that will show you raw data. Maybe we make that bold. I think that looks good. And so then if I just copy this, it'll keep that center across selection formatting. And then I can update everything else. So if I say raw data, this is actually product lookup. And I want to make this this color of gray. And so if I copy this, let's just say I want to paste it here. I want to do my customer lookup. And I want to make it that color of yellow. And then ultimately, I just have one calculated field here. But I just call this calculated field and I make it that color of green. Oops. Um, now what we have is, is a pretty well-documented working data tab. So if someone comes, they know exactly what they're looking at. They know exactly what each of these columns represent, what each of the colors represent. I will say there are some benefits to having your data start in cell A1 and not have an additional row here. I find this is probably easier if you're definitely handing a document over, if you're working with something yourself. I personally prefer to have my data always start in A1. It makes it simpler for me. But again, depends on your situation you're working with. If you're interested in understanding best practices for formatting your table output, please check out the next video in our series. Otherwise, thank you for joining us at Essentials Explained. And we look forward to seeing you again soon.